Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely little wall cupboard for the craft shed project. We've got pin hinged doors here, which is quite easy to do. I've used mesh um, for the doors, but you could also use acetate if you wanted a clear glaze on there. Coming up next, I'll tell you what um, tools and materials you'll need. The cutting list again is below in the description, and then we'll get started. For this project you'll need a suitable craft wood, such as basswood or a besh, both of which are available in my Etsy shop. You'll need a craft knife, such as this Swan Morton knife, which takes a size 10A blade, a steel rule for measuring and for cutting the wood along with your craft knife, a nice sharp pencil for accurate marking, an eraser, a suitable wood glue, You'll need super glue um, for attaching the mesh. If you're going to use acetate, um, you'll need a, a suitable glue for that, and I like, I like the Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze. Cocktail sticks for applying glue and removing glue from along the joins. And we also use a cocktail stick to make the doorknobs. Mini clamps for holding drying parts together, and masking tape and scissors for the same purpose. We'll be pin hinging the doll, so you'll need some dressmaking pins, a mini hand drill, and a 0.75mm bit, or 1/32 of an inch bit, a pair of pliers, a couple of grades of sandpaper, a fine and a medium, your choice of paint, wood dye or varnish, and then for the doors you'll need mesh or acetate. Okay, so we're going to begin by constructing the main body of the wall cupboard. So I've got those pieces here. And then have a spare piece of um, 6x3 strip and that's just for when we come to position the central strip. And that will be um, sort of like a spacer. So I'll just put that there. Okay, so I've got some glue here that I've dispensed onto a piece of card. I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. So begin by applying glue along the side, outer edge of the back piece. And then pop that back on your work surface and attach the side piece, making sure the top and bottom of each piece are level. And press that into place. If it becomes stuck, just push it along your work surface rather than trying to pick it up. Or it will just fall apart. And you can use a spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue. I'm then going to attach the top piece on the inside edge of those joined pieces. So apply glue to one long and one short edge. into place and that should be flush with the top of that back piece. And you can just use your finger to check that that's flush along there and then pull that side piece in to meet it. Make sure it's going right into that inner corner. Oops. Just pull the side piece off there. Push it all together. along again. Then we're going to attach the bottom piece again on that inside edge. I'm just going to sand a piece off that side. Always go along the sandpaper in one direction rather than sort of going back and forth when you'll round the corners off. Again apply glue to one short and one long edge. And that should be flush with the bottom of that back piece. And then you can pull that side piece in to meet it. Put 
push it all together and then we can attach the remaining side piece. So apply glue along these outer edges. Pop that back down and then push the side piece against it. Again making sure those top and bottom edges are flush. So press that all together. Get in there and remove any excess glue like that. And I've got a couple of pieces of masking tape here and I'm actually going to put a piece around each side. So pull it over the top, pull it nice and firm and over the other side as well. And then that can just be left to dry. OK, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and sand the piece on all sides, on the front and back as well. And I've already done this one, so you've got a nice sort of flush piece there. And then make a pencil mark in the centre of the top and the bottom. A mark like that. Turn it round and do the bottom as well. And then just check that the central strip fits nicely inside without pushing up the top and bottom. And the reason it might be a little bit too long is if the top and bottom are a bit thicker than 1.5, which can happen. They can be up to sort of almost two millimetres thick. So just check you've got a nice fit there. And then you want to do a, cent a, a pencil mark in the centre on the top and bottom of that strip. Like that. That's just so we can line it up. And then apply a little bit of glue to each end. And then put it into place so that the pencil marks are lined up. And just sort of let the glue begin to take. You want to place it so it's a little bit back from the front and bottom edge. And then that's what our spacer here is for. So sort of press it in to get the glue to start to take. And just remove any glue from the front, otherwise the spacer will try and stick there. Because we've got a bit of time before the glue sets, that we can still sort of move the strip about, it's okay to let it dry off for a moment. And then actually that's placed quite well, so you want it to be the thickness of this strip back, because that's three millimetres, which will be the thickness of our door. So this central piece is acting sort of like a door stop, and will be a strip showing between the doors. So just manoeuvre it into position, and the same at that end as well, Try not to sort of knock out the end you've just put in place, basically so the front of the spacer strip is flush with that front edge there. And I just want to tilt it up a tiny bit, there. So now we know that's three millimetres back from that front edge and just have another quick little check to make sure the pencil lines are lined up. I'll just move that over a tiny bit and then you can press that down. Once it's completely dry we'll erase those um, pencil marks. Okay now we can start constructing the doors. OK, so I've cut the um, strip wood for the doors and you just want to start again just by checking that they each fit um, nicely within the, the sort of cupboard body. So they should each fit in there and then there should just be a tiny little fraction of a gap at one end and that's just so that the door will sort of open and close um, smoothly. So check each of those pieces and if you need to just sand a little bit off the end, um, then do so. 
and then normally when I'm rounding door frame sides I do it um, on the sheet of sandpaper like that but because this bit is so thin I'm just going to hold it in my hand and just gently round off sort of two long corners like that so just hold the sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just go along that edge and it only needs slight rounding That and then do the one next to it and you want to do this to two of the long um, strips or the door sides and then these will become the hinged um, side so they'll go on the outer edges of the cupboard I'm going to try and show you there from the top probably again can't pick it up on the camera but so it's just very very gently rounded off those two um, edges there so do that with both or two of the side pieces okay so we're now going to drill um, a hole in both ends of each of those rounded side pieces so I've clamped it here into my um, desk vise and I've just put this piece of kitchen towel around because the vise tends to mark um, soft wood. So I'll just sort of tuck a piece of kitchen towel in there, whether it's strip wood or sheet wood, and that will protect it. And then we're going to drill a 0.75mm hole, that's one thirty-second of an inch, right in the centre of that strip. So place it by eye if you can, but if you need to measure then just put a little pencil dot there. Hold the drill as upright as you can otherwise it will sort of break through the wood and then just drill try not to put any pressure on the drill just let it go in sort of on its own like that and this drill bit um, that I'm using here it actually broke but I still use it and it's the ideal length for the pin hinges so you need to go in, that's probably um, about a quarter of an inch there. So if you have got a sort of full drill bit, then go in by about a quarter of an inch. So do that in each end of both of those rounded um, side pieces. Tighten that up in there. Okay, so we can now construct the doors so just make sure that your rounded um, side on each piece is facing outwards so that way out and then you're gluing these to the flat edge so apply glue to each end of the top and bottom pieces lay that there And then glue it right to the top of that rounded side piece like that making sure you've got a nice straight edge along there and the sun's just come out that's nice and the same at the bottom so you've got a nice straight edge and then attach the unrounded side again making sure that you keep everything square Just very gently squeeze it all together. Just slide that along the desk and that can be left to dry and then construct the remaining door in the same way. Okay, as we've got quite a narrow um, door frame, I'm going to make a doorknob using a cocktail stick. So begin by snipping the pointed end from the stick and just do that by rolling it along your worktop, along the edge of the knife blade. And then take a piece of medium grade sandpaper and just holding that in your hand, twist the cocktail stick and just round over the top edge. Keep going until you've got a nice shape there, a sort of even edge, like that. And then lay that on your um, worktop bring in your rule 
and we're going to trim that to about two millimeters. So holding onto the rounded end um, with your fingernail, otherwise it will just sort of ping off like that other end bit did. Sort of make your little mark, and then just holding onto that rounded end again. Just try and oops, curl that along. until you cut through like that and then tweezers are a good idea here to handle these tiny doorknobs and I'll make a second one and then we can attach them okay so make a little pencil dot in the center of each unrounded frame side And then apply glue to the flat edge of your doorknob. And then stick that into place. Press it down with the end of the tweezers. And that one. And then you can remove any excess glue. And then the doors and the main body of the unit can then be painted. And I've I used um, fine grade sandpaper to remove those pencil marks. Okay, so all pieces have now been painted, and I just did one coat of emulsion paint on each piece, and then gently sanded them all. And now we're going to fit the mesh to the doors. So I've already done one door. The glue on there is still drying, so I'm just propping it up against that. And for the mesh, um, it comes in sheets and you can buy it in different gauges. And I sell a couple um, on my Etsy shop. So a finer mesh, which is the one I'm using here, which is the one I recommend. And then a harder one for larger projects. So it's quite pliable. It's got these small um, diamond holes in it and it can just be cut with normal scissors. So to measure for the door, you just want it to fit um, just inside that door frame, just leaving a little border around the outside. Measure it like that, and then you can just cut along with the diamonds. So keep a straight cut, and the same that way. And I've cut a piece here, and then to attach this you need you need super glue. So apply the glue around the inside edge of the frame and you don't need a lot. Go along like that, sort of spread it along with the nozzle as you go. Really careful not to get it on your fingers. Like that. And then lay the piece of mesh in place again without touching the glue you could press down in the center just to get it to make contact around the edge there and then for this particular one it advises to hold it in place for 10 to 30 seconds and I use this plastic lid obviously you don't want to touch the glue so press it down And just make sure that the mesh is touching all the way around and then you can pick that up and just keep pressing it against the glue for as long as your sort of particular make of super glue advises. So when you take the um, plastic away just make sure again that that's touching all the way around. If it isn't you can just press that area down again until everything's touching the frame. Now this particular super glue will take um, a complete 24 hours to dry um, fully but if you're impatient like me you can get on but, but do let it dry for about an hour otherwise it will be sticking um, to the inside of that central strip when we close our doors. So I'll go and make a cup of tea and I'll be back in a bit. 
Okay, so I've actually left these um, doors dry now for about an hour. So now we're going to fit the doors. So begin by um, pushing just a normal dressmaking pin into each of the drilled holes. And just push until you get resistance. Don't keep sort of trying to push it in further as it'll split through the wood. And then take a pair of pliers and you want to trim the pin off to about three millimeters or one eighth of an inch long. And I know that if I put it so that the plier is touching the top of the door, that that's about a three millimetre cut, because the cutter is actually back from the edge of the pliers. So I normally go like that, snip that off, and then break. But do just check how much of an indentation you've got in your own set of pliers, just in case they're not the same, in case it's sort of not a universal thing. And then just on your desktop, just make sure that the pins are in as far as they should be. Pliers may have just pulled them out a little bit, like that. And then pop one door sort of into position at the front of the unit. And you want a bit of a gap down this edge so that our door has got room to sort of swing open. So don't have it flush up against the edge. Just a little gap like that. Um, probably even less than a millimetre. And then we're going to make a little um, pencil mark for where we want to drill our hole. So you want it level with the pin and because it's in the centre of that three millimetre strip it should be 1.5 millimetres or one sixteenth of an inch back from that front edge. So make the pencil mark there Keeping the door in place, turn it over and do the same at the bottom. And if you're not happy measuring by eye, then do use your ruler just to measure the 1.5 millimetres. That there. And if you're, if that's going to be that left-hand door, then put that on the left left-hand side of your worktop. That's what I normally do to make sure I put the right one back in the right place and we're going to do the same thing again with this one pop that over there and then again I've got the the same drill bit in here the um, 0.75 mil drill bit and 30 second of an inch I'm just going to use it on the on the desk this time so put it in place over your pencil dot again keeping it upright and I'm supporting the shelf with my little finger. And there. That side. And then turn it over and do it again. Okay, so bring your doors back in. And then remove the bottom pin in one of them. Just put that to the side. And then, let me come around that side. Insert the top pin into the top hole. Line the door up. And then take the pin that you removed back in the pliers. and then push it back in through both holes. I'm sort of holding the door in position. And before you push it all the way in, just check that the door opens nicely, which it does. Once you've pushed that pin in, you then can't get it out again without sort of breaking the wood. So always just make sure before you push it right in like that, that top one as well, 
and that's the first door. I'm going to leave it open a bit because that, like I say, that super glue will take full 24 hours to cure completely. So I don't want it sticking to that central rail. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing with the remaining door. I was lucky with that first door, it just went straight in. But like this one, I, I can feel that I can't find the hole in the bottom of the door with the tip of the pin. So I'm just going to pull the door out a little bit and check that those holes are actually lined up. So see how you can just pull the door out to see the hole. Push back in and try again. There, it's gone this time. So I'm just pushing it in a little way and then I'll check that the door is opening and it's there's a little bit sticking up there on that top, so that's why it's a little bit stiff, nothing to do with the pin hinge. So that's okay. You don't want the doors to be loose. So if they're a little bit tight, sort of top and bottom, that's all right. But as long as that hinge is working nicely, and then you can push that bottom pin in. Like that. On the worktop, push the top one in. And there's the doors. So I'm just going to open those so that that glue doesn't stick. And then we're going to now bevel one long edge, and both short edges of the wall cupboard top and bottom pieces. Okay, so with a sheet of sandpaper flat on your work surface, take the piece of wood, hold it at a 45 degree angle, and just sweep it towards you, keeping it at that angle. You don't need to apply too much pressure, but try not to sort of press it down in one area as it, as it will bevel unevenly. Like that, and then do the sides. When you're happy with that, you can take a smaller piece of finer grade sandpaper and just tidy those up. And do the remaining one. Okay, we're now going to glue the wall cupboard top and bottom into place. So apply glue to the top and bottom of the cupboard. And then you want the straight, unbeveled edge to be flush with the back of the cupboard and for there to be an even overhang at either side. Like that. The overhang is normally sort of the width of the bevel. And the other piece, same again. Like that. And then you can lay that down on your work surface and make sure that the back of each piece is level or is flush. Squeeze it all together. Get another cocktail stick to remove the excess glue. got a couple of pieces of masking tape here. I'm going to put a piece right over the top like that. Pull nice and firmly. Another piece over the bottom or the top or whatever it becomes. And then I always like to put a few clamps in as well. Probably only be able to get a couple in here. Just make sure you don't have any 
gap in at the top and bottom edges. Oops. One just fell apart. And then if any extra glue sort of seeps out, make sure you remove that at this stage. Okay, so that can now be left to dry and then we'll finish it off by painting the top and bottom. And there is the completed wall cupboard. Now I will be gluing this into place eventually, but for now I've just stuck a loop of masking tape on the back just to put it into place, but I want to do a little display inside first um, before I glue it into place, just make it easier to get into. And that will be going over here in the corner, sort of level with the window. So I hope you've enjoyed this project, if so please do subscribe and hit the notification button too and then you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you could give the video a thumbs up as well that would be appreciated. If you enjoy making doll's house furniture and miniatures you might like to have a look at my books. I've published four of them so far and they're all available to purchase from Amazon. I'll pop a couple of links below. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.